Hey, how's going, guys? Have you find yourself no matter how hard you try to study the stock market, but you always ended up losing money? You always see other people seems to make a lot of money in the stock market, but whenever it comes to you, whatever the stocks you buy, they seems to always go against you. Well, you are not alone. More than 90% of participants in the stock market can never make any money. But have you asked yourself why is that? Is it because you don't have enough knowledge, or is it just because you are not lucky enough? In this video, I will use a simple mathematical example to deep dive into the stock market and show you guys why you always lose money in the stock market. Also, I will share with you guys some really important tips to help you avoid dangerous mistakes and become a consistent profitable investor. All right, let's get started. There was a very famous survey conducted by the major brokerage firms on Wall Street from 1987 to 2009. They studied their clients' brokerage accounts and they find something really interesting. 90% of their clients lost 90% of their initial capital in the first 90 trading days. They named it the 90-90-90 rule. But the question is, why is that? The stock market is a 50-50 chance game, right? You buy a stock, the stock either goes up or down. But why does the significant majority of the investors cannot even earn any money in this easy game of 50-50 chance? Is there any deeper mathematical theory that behind the stock market that is causing this extreme result? Well, let me give you an example. Let's imagine there is this guy named Steve. He walks into a casino for the first time. Every game seems too complicated for him to play. He doesn't want to play any games that he doesn't understand. So Steve decides to leave. But before he leaves, he is invited by the casino owner to play a game with extremely simple rules that are specially designed for the beginners like Steve. Here are the rules of this game. Steve will be playing against the casino. Each one of them has one coin with two sides, head and a tail. For every round, Steve and the casino can choose which side they want to show. If both of them show the head, then Steve will earn $3. If both of them show the tail, then Steve will earn $1. If two of them show different sides of the coin, then Steve will lose $2 to the casino. So Steve decides to play this game. First, it's because the rules are pretty easy to understand. Second, he did a very quick calculation in his mind. The probability of two heads is 25% chance. Two tails is also 25%. One head, one tail is 50%. So he believes this game is a simple 50-50 chance game. It's all about luck. But after playing for a while, Steve realized that he is the one always losing money. Casino is always the one winning. He couldn't understand why. He blamed himself wasn't lucky enough on that day. Was it really because he was just simply not lucky enough? Or is there any deeper mathematical trick behind this game and the purposely made Steve lose money? The key to playing this game is to have a clear strategy of which side of the coin you should be playing each round. For example, if Steve keeps playing the tail, then he will guarantee to lose money at the end because the expected value of 100% tail for Steve is negative. So what truly determines who will be the one making money and who will be the one losing money in this game is the probability of choosing the head or tail from both Steve and the casino. And this is exactly where the casino can manipulate the game and make sure they're always the winner at the end. This is how it works. Let's assume the probability of Steve choosing the head is x. So the probability of him choosing the tail is 1 minus x. For casino, let's assume their probability of choosing the head is y. So the probability for casino choosing the tail is 1 minus y. Both x and y are greater than 0 and less than 1. Now let's calculate the total expected value for Steve playing this game. We can break down the total expected value into four different scenarios. First scenario, when both the Steve and the casino choose the head, the expected value will be 3 multiplied by xy. Second scenario, when both of them choose the tail, then the expected value for this scenario will be 1 multiplied by 1 minus x, 1 minus y. The third scenario, when Steve choose the head but the casino choose the tail, the expected value will be negative 2 multiplied by x, 1 minus y. And the last one, when Steve choose the tail but the casino choose the head, the expected value will be negative 2 multiplied by y, 1 minus x. So if we add them up, then we can get this long equation of Steve's total expected value to play this game. After we simplify this equation, we can get the value of E equals to 8xy minus 3x minus 3y plus 1. This is how much money Steve can expect to earn from playing this game in a pure mathematical analysis. If the value of E is positive, that means after playing a decent amount of time, Steve will be able to earn some profit from the casino. On the other hand, if the value of E is negative, that will mean Steve will lose money in the end. Because Casino was the one that actually designed this game, and Steve was just a pure beginner. Is there any possibility that a Casino is able to purposely rig the game and make sure Steve always lose money in the end?
All right, let's continue with this equation. In order to make sure Steve always lose money, in a mathematical way, Casino just to make sure Steve's expected value is always negative. Now let's see how Casino can mathematically manipulate the game and achieve this. When the value of e is negative, which means this whole function has been less than zero, so we just need to solve this simple linear inequality in terms of y. After we simplify the whole linear inequality, we can get ax minus 3 multiplied by y is less than 3x minus 1. Here's the important part. In order to solve this inequality, we need to assume two cases. 8x minus 3 is greater than 0, and 8x minus 3 is less than 0. Let's start with the case 1. When 8x minus 3 is greater than 0, then we can get y is less than 3x minus 1 over 8x minus 3. If we want y to be less than this function of x, then we just need to make sure one thing. The y is less than the minimal value of this function of x. Then how to get this minimal value? Pretty easy. If we look at this entire function of x, we can see that the greater the x value is, the less the function value will be. As we mentioned earlier, both x and y are probability values, which are between 0 and 1. So this function of x will have this minimum value when x equals to its maximum value, which is 1. So when x is 1, we can easily get y is less than 2 over 5, or 40% probability of choosing the head. Alright, this is the case 1. Now let's take a look at case 2. When 8x minus 3 is less than 0. In this case, we will get y is greater than 3x minus 1 over 8x minus 3. Now it's the opposite. If we wanted this y to be greater than the function of x, then we just need to make sure y is greater than the maximum value of this function of x. How to get the maximum value? When x has its minimum value, which is 0. So when x equals to 0, we can get y is greater than 1 over 3, or 33% probability of choosing the head. Alright, once we calculate these two cases, we can now combine these two probability value of y together and finally get that y is greater than 33% but less than 40%. What does it mean? It means as long as the casino controls their probability of choosing the head strictly between 33% to 40% in the whole game, Steve will always lose money in the end. And this is exactly the mathematical strategy that Casino was using to have an edge over Steve without even informing him. The game was originally designed for Steve to lose money. A game seems to have 50-50 chance on the surface, but when one party has a strategy to gain an edge over another party, then this game is no longer an equal 50-50 chance game anymore. So the next important question is, what does it mean to our stock market? What lessons can we learn from this example? You can probably realize that this game which Steve was playing can represent our stock market perfectly. The casino represents the biggest institutional powerhouse who has the ability to manipulate the market. In fact, the amount of capital they own are so massive that they are the market. And Steve represents the small retail investors, especially those new investors who have very limited investing knowledge and experience. There is a popular saying that goes, in the financial market, only 5% of the people who actually knows what they are doing. Because they are the house, they are the market. And there are another 5% of the people who know how to follow the top 5%. Either they have the insider information, or experience, or both. And the rest of the 90% have no idea why they keep losing money to the top 10%. Yes, from the very beginning, the stock market was designed to make sure the majority of the players lose money and only benefit those top-tier wealthy institutions. Now let's come back to this chart and I will show you why. The casino can choose the head or the tail represents those institutional powerhouses can use their massive capital to move the market up or down anytime they want. There are many examples, the pump and dump is one of those classic examples. On the other hand, Steve can choose the head or the tail represents the retail investors can choose to long the stock or short the stock to profit from the market. So when the institutional money decides to push up the stock price and you choose to long the stock, you make profits. Same thing, when you choose to short the stock and also the institutional money decides to dump this stock, you make money too. If the institutional money pumps the stock price up but you choose to short the stock, you lose money. If the institutional investors are pulling money out of the market but you are still in the market, you lose money too. On the surface, it looks like everyone has a chance to earn money. Retail investors believe the stock market is a fair game, but they don't realize that the stock market is just another extension of the entire capital market in our capitalism society, which means it can be easily controlled and manipulated by the powerhouse who controls the majority of the capital. 
So the stock market is basically the game that is already decided by those who have more money and more power to move the market. Because only the ones who can truly move the market can set a strategy and a game plan to purposely rig the market to make sure they are always the winner and the majority of the investors lose money. It has been always like this since the creation of the stock market in Amsterdam back in the 18th century. Legendary trader Jesse Livermore once famously said, The pockets change, the suckers change, the stocks change, but the game never changes. So, if you are new to the stock market and treat the stock market like a casino, play the game purely on luck, you will never ever beat the market and make any money. Because you will just be another Steve, the game is designed for you to lose. No matter if you're a long-term investor or a short-term trader, there is only one thing that can decide if you can truly make money from the market or not, and that thing is called the edge. You definitely, definitely need an edge in the market if you want to win in this game. If not, you might have a few lucky hands at the beginning, but eventually you will lose all your money and don't even know why. There are thousands of ways to find a market edge, but it will take a lot of time and efforts to build your own market edge that suits you the best. Every single successful investor and trader have spent years, some even decades, to study the market and finally become extraordinarily successful in the world of investing. And this is exactly what this channel is all about. My ultimate mission for this channel is to help you guys have a better understanding of the financial market each day and eventually find your own market edge to make profits consistently. Although it's impossible to share with you guys everything about investing in just a 10 minute video, but I do have two extremely important pieces of advice for those who are new to the stock market. First, the stock market goes in cycles. Usually one full cycle lasts about 8 to 12 years. For the very first cycle that you started out, you should put your major focus on dividend growth investing instead of solely relying on capital gain. There are two main reasons for this. One, dividend growth investing is way much less volatile compared with the capital gain investing. For example, back in 2008 global financial crisis, S&P 500 crashed more than 50%, but those S&P 500 companies' dividend payments only went down 11%. Another reason is that it's much easier for those institutional players to manipulate the share price, but it is extremely difficult or almost impossible for them to manipulate the dividend payment. So that is perfect for beginners to learn how to do a proper valuation of their investment and build a diversified income portfolio from scratch. Alright, the second advice I would like to share with you guys is that no matter if you want to be a long-term investor or a short-term trader in the stock market, I highly recommend you to invest your first 6 to 12 months to study the macro finance. When you fully understand how the macro finance works and how each macro factor impacts each other, it will lay a great foundation for you to actively anticipate the next major move in the market instead of just passively reacting to it. For example, if you follow my channel long enough, you probably realize that I like to use the bond market and the dollar index to navigate the US stock market. That is just one of the many classic examples applying the macro finance to the stock market investing. Alright, so these are the two quick advice I wanted to share with you guys in this video. Of course, there's so much more I want to talk about. In the future, I will definitely make more contents to help you guys avoid all the dangerous mistakes and become better investors in the stock market. Remember, although the large institutional players have the power to manipulate the stock market, you have at least one edge over them, and that is time. Stop treating the stock market as a get-rich-quick casino. Be patient with your portfolio, focus on the progress instead of the results when you started out, and eventually you will find your own edge to beat the market. Alright, that will be the end of this video. If you are new to this channel, my name is Vic. I make videos every week to share some of my thoughts on what is going on in the financial market. And also share some educational contents to help your investing journey just like this one. If you are interested in the world of finance and investing, and I find my videos and be valuable to you, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I will see you guys soon.